the greedy mouse. One day, mouse found a very big pen. I will take this pen into my house, he said. He pushed the pen from the back. It didn't move. He put it from the front. The pen didn't move. He put it from the right. The pen didn't move. He ran around the pen and put it from the left, but the stay didn't move. Hmm. I will tie a string around the pen and pull it into my house. Mouse ran to the house and got a string, but it was too short. He went back and got a longer string. He tied the pen with the long string, then pull and pull, but it didn't move. Mouse sat down and ate a little bit of the pen. It was very good. He ate a little more, then a little more, and a little more, till the pen became smaller and smaller. He pushed the pen. It rolled right into his house. Mouse was very happy. The pen was safely in his house, but he had eaten so much pen that his stomach had become so so big. Mouse pushed and pushed him there, but he couldn't get into his house. Mouse sat outside his door, holding his stomach and growl. I should not have eaten so much pen. I should have shared it with someone. Do and don't. Good morning. Time to wake up. I don't want to wake up. I don't want to do the big job. I don't want to brush my teeth. I don't want to have a bath. I don't want to have at least for breakfast. I don't want to go to school. Um, but today is your class picnic at the zoo. I do like at least with sugar. I do want to go to school. I do like thinking why I take a bath. I do want to use my new toothbrush. Oops, this is urgent. I do want to go for the big job. Here I come like a rocket. Do please give away. Don't stand in my way. Seeking for younger sister. Ring. His school was over. Pushed back his bed and said goodbye to his friend as he left the school. He walked up hill past the lake and strode through the fields to his house. When he opened the door, he called out to his sister, "Chinda, I'm home." But there was no answer. Fish wondered if she was still sleeping. "Chinda, where are you?" Fish called out again. He looked all over the house, but she was nowhere to be found. Fish was so worried that he went out right away without even putting down his bag. Fish walked out to the field, where he ran into Mister Sun. Mister Sun, Mister Sun, have you seen my sister? Fish asked. I think I saw a little girl walking towards the lake. Mister Sun answers after pondering Fish's questions for a while. Thank you, Fish said. By the way, what's that on your back? Inquired Mister Sun. This is my back bed. I carry both inside, but they're just things we don't know. Then can they answer my question? Asked Mister Sun. Sure. What do you want to know? Fish replied. Why do these pretty yellow flowers keep looking at me? My book says they are called sunflowers. They need your warm sunlight to grow. That's why they keep looking at you," responded Fish. "Now I understand. Both really do teach us a lot. Now you should hurry to the lake if you want to find your sister." Fish walked to the lake as Mister Sun suggested. Finally, he met Win. Win, Win, have you seen my sister? Fish asked. I believe I saw a little girl going down the hill," replied Win. Thank you," Fish said. "By the way, what's that on your back?" said Win. "This is my back bed. I carry both inside. What teaches things we don't know? Then can they answer my questions?" Win asked. "Sure. What do you want to know?" "Every time I pass by the lake, I see flowers and trees inside it. Is the water inside the lake the same as ours?" "This book said that the surface of the lake is a reflection." Beneath the water, everything is different. There are schools of fish that swim around, crabs which shed pincers that walk sideways, and many different types of water plants which explain. Now I understand. Books really do teach us a lot. Now you should hurry down the hill if you want to find your sister.
which went down the hill as Wynne had suggested. Soon he met Miss Moon. Miss Moon, Miss Moon, have you seen my sister? Fish asked. I think I saw a little girl walking towards that big tree, replied Miss Moon. Thank you, Fish said. By the way, what's that on your back? asked Miss Moon. This is my back bed. I carry both inside. Both teach us things we don't know. Then could they answer my question? Miss Moon inquired. Sure, what do you want to know? Why do children draw me in so many different ways? Miss Moon asked. They draw me as a full sake, as a semi sake, and sometimes like a banana. I learned about this in a book, Miss Moon. Let me explain, said Fish. Take a look at me, what shape is my face? It's a sake, replied Miss Moon. Now I've turned round, what shape is my face now? I see a semi sake, Miss Moon answers. Let me turn a little more, Fish said. Now what shape is my face? It's as thin as a banana, acknowledged Miss Moon. Now I understand, both really do teach us a lot, exclaimed Miss Moon. Now you should hurry along to that tree to find your sister. Bish ran across to the big tree as Miss Moon had suggested. To his surprise, the tree was next to his school. Bish walked inside and found Shanto sound asleep at the deck. Shanto, why are you here? exclaimed Bish. I had been looking everywhere for you. I'm sorry, Shanto replied. I just wanted to come and see you at school. Every day when you come home, you look so happy, so I really want to go to school too. I'm sorry, Chanda. Fish apologized. I've never knew that you wanted to go to school too. From now on, let's go to school together every day. Hooray! I can't wait to learn as much as you, Chanda called out. They walked home holding hands, looking down fondly from the hot place in the sky. Miss Moon shone her light up on them and smiled. Dive. Loose cans and can bottles. About 30 for diving, we set out in a little boat, hoping for a bit adventure. When we reached the dive site, we carefully checked all our equipment and put on our fins and masks. As soon as we were underwater, we were greeted by a school of yellow vet fusiliers. There were so many different creatures to see around this last type of Oriental stylus, barrel fish, pet fish, and even a beautifully patterned unibrain. To know more about the creatures marked up in bold lettering, turn to the back section of this book. This trumpet fish changed color to try and blend in with a school of yellow tin, but you can pick him out easily enough, can you? It's a good thing we kept a safe distance from this lion fish. The spines on his back can be quite poisonous. These clownfish carefully guided their sea anemone home, but finally agreed to let me take a few pictures. We saw a honeycomb mori eel having its teeth clean by cleaning those razors, and another pair even offered to give us a secret. There were triggerfish and sea urchins. We even saw a coral grouba and a reef octopus very hide and seek. The octopus won the game, they are masters of disguise. Bifish are great at disguise too. Can you spot the two ghost bifish in these pictures? We came across a carpet of white creatures resting near the pattern. They are pretty harmless so we can swim in for a closer look. We followed this hunchback turtle for a while as he looked around the reef for a nice sea sponge to land on. As we made our way back to the boat, we were thrilled to see a mentory flying through the water with two remora fish in tow. And just when we thought this dive couldn't possibly get any better, we sighted a dugan grazing on some sea grass. What an incredible experience! I can't wait to go diving again. Corals are both plants and animals. Thousands of little algae live inside corals and give them energy to grow. They have hard outer skeletons and grow into many different shapes. Plankton is the main source of food for many sea creatures. They are made of algae, bacteria, tiny animals, and the eggs, and larva of larger animals that float about with the ocean currents. Feather stills may look like plants, but they are really animals. They use their feather-like arms to catch and eat bits of floating plankton.
Barrel fish have strong teeth that form a parrot like beak, which they use to secrete algae of hot coral. Some species don't mind eating bits of coral as well, and they later pull off a fine sand that wedges up on land to form beautiful white beaches. Clownfish and sea anemones live together and help each other. The clownfish help the anemones by cleaning their tentacles and luring other fish for the anemone to eat. The anemones in turn allow the clownfish to hide them and their poisonous tentacles without stinging them. Clingsong rats are small fish that keep bigger fish clean by feeding on their parasites and their skin. The bigger fish recognize the rats by their colors and the tense like way they move. The reef octopus can hide by changing its colors and texture. It makes its home in holes in the reef or buries itself in the sand. Ghost by fish can be found in pairs, floating with their heads down and hidden among sea grass, chorus of feathered stir. Like the reef octopus, they can change color to blend in perfectly. The white tip reef shark has a thin, furry, broad head and white teeth on its dorsals and tail fin. They hunt at night and sleep through most of the day. The huntsbill turtle has a flat body, a shell with jagged edges, and a sharp carving mark that looks like a horse beak. Manchurians are huge fish with wing like fins on the sides of their bodies. These large fins help them swim gracefully through the water. On some manchurians, the distance from one wingtip to the other can reach up to 23 feet. The dugan is a vegetarian marine mammal. Its favorite food is secrets, which it is able to graze on with its specially shaped snout. Dugans are also called sea cows.